When President Nixon went to China in 1972, he began a period of detente between the United States and the People's Republic of China that would see the two countries increasingly work together against the Soviet Union. The Chinese military in the 1970s and 80s was vast, but equipped with outdated weapons. It was to help remedy this that a number of projects involving the upgrading of Chinese equipment with technology transfers from Western countries occurred. The Jaguar main battle tank was created as one of these projects. Late in 1988, Cadillac Gage of the United States and the China National Machinery and Equipment Import and Export Corporation, CMC for short, announced that they were jointly developing a new main battle tank. This vehicle, the Jaguar, would be based on the Chinese Type 59 tank, itself a copy of the Soviet T-55, which formed the mainstay of the People's Liberation Army's tank fleet at the time. The Type 59 was primitive and outdated by the 1980s, but it was in mass production and was a simple and reliable vehicle. The Jaguar would build on this solid base by integrating modern Western technologies into the vehicle, in effect blending the two strong points of both countries' defence industries in a single product. Cadillac Gage would provide the design knowledge and the high technology components, the Chinese cheap manufacturing. It's important to realise that at the time the Jaguar was in development, it wasn't intended to be in the same league as the frontline Western tanks in service at the time. Vehicles like the British Challenger 1, the German Leopard 2, or the American M1A1. Those vehicles all enjoyed better protection, firepower and mobility than the Jaguar. But they also cost considerably more. In 1988, an M1A1 cost a between 4 and $4.5 million. Jaguar was expected to cost about $1 million once full production started. It might have been inferior to the top-line tanks, but you could buy four Jaguars for every one Abrams, exactly what a massive army like China needed to update its armour fleet. And despite being cheap, the Jaguar was far from being a slouch. It had a Chinese-made version of the formidable British L7 105mm cannon, which is still widely used today. This was complemented by a 7.62mm machine gun mounted coaxially, and the option of a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on the roof for anti-aircraft defence. It also had banks of smoke grenade discharges firing forwards. The main armament was fully stabilised and fitted with a British GC Marconi digital fire control system. This was the same as fitted to Cadillac Gage's Stingray light tanks and allowed the Jaguar to engage moving targets when it was itself moving, with a high first round hit probability. The tank also had image intensification night vision equipment and a laser rangefinder, making the tank's gun extremely accurate. The four-man crew had a conventional layer with the driver's compartment at the front, the three-man fighting compartment located in the centre and engine and transmission in the rear. The main armour was that of the base Type 59, but with an added layer of spaced armour to provide additional protection, especially against anti-tank missiles with heat warheads. This gave the vehicle its very sleek look. Weight-wise, these additions made the Jaguar quite a bit heavier than the Type 59, 42 tonnes against 36. But automotively, the tank was very much improved as well. The old 520 horsepower engine was replaced with a Detroit diesel developing 750 horsepower, coupled to an Allison fully automatic transmission. This gave the Jaguar a power to weight ratio of just under 18 horsepower per tonne versus the Type 59's 14.4 horsepower per tonne. Because it was based on a number of developed components, the Jaguar enjoyed a very rapid development program. Cadillac Gage was provided with two Type 59 MBTs from China and by mid-1989 the prototype was complete and undergoing automotive trials in Detroit, while the turret was undergoing initial firing trials. In October 1989, the vehicle was completed and began full trials. By all accounts, it performed extremely well. Unfortunately, timing is everything, and the Jaguars was bad. The noise of gunfire rose from all over the centre of Peking. It was unremitting. After hours of shooting, and facing a line of troops. The crowd is still here. They're shouting, stop the killing and down with the government. On June 4th, 1989, the Chinese government cracked down on student protesters who had been protesting in Beijing's Tiananmen Square for several months. PLA troops opened fire on the pro-democracy protesters and tanks rolled in.
An unknown number were killed, but the footage of the massacre shocked the world. The result was a rapid cooling of relations between the United States and China. This was to spill the end of the military cooperation projects, though Cadillac Gage would continue to work on the Jaguar alone. The hope of building new vehicles in China may have ended, but Cadillac still believed that there was a market for offering upgrade packages to the vast numbers of Type 59 and T-55 tanks in service around the world. And then in November 1989, as the Jaguar prototype was undergoing testing, the Berlin Wall came down. The Cold War was over. As a result, no one had any interest in buying new tanks. Instead, the rapid shrinking of NATO armies as their governments rushed to make the most of the peace dividend from radically reduced defence spending meant that countries could buy high-end vehicles like the Leopard 2 for a song. And that spelt the end for Jaguar a tank that just missed its window of opportunity. After all, had it been developed five years earlier, it's entirely possible there would be hundreds, possibly thousands in service today. Thanks for watching. Hope you found the video of interest. It's a shame I wasn't able to find any video of the Jaguar in trials, or more confirmed pictures, but perhaps one day I'll be able to get into any Cadillac Gage archives that might still exist. And if that happens, I'll have to do an update. If you like this sort of content, maybe consider subscribing. I try to put out new videos as much as possible. And if you did enjoy the video, please drop a like. Have a good one, stay safe, and with a bit of luck, I'll catch you again soon.